It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the business owner of the Road to College Football, Brett Gibson. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you got started with your sports uh, college football blog? Yeah, so uh, I would go to a couple of college stadiums and um, I was like, man, these are really cool. Um, I kind of want to see what the entire country has. You know, there's 130 different ones and I like to see all all different ones and to start off with just going and visiting the stadiums, you know, nobody in them, no games, nothing like that. Uh, and I decided that, you know, this just isn't enough. I want to see games in all of them. Um, and so it kind of just begun as a fun, something I would do, you know, if I'm in the area, I'll just swing by um, and it's gone to, I go out of my way now <laughs> to go see these. Um, and it's become quite a venture, uh, you know, got some people, on board to that enjoy the the travels and stuff so i expanded and started a website uh, rotocfp.com that documents all the travels um in conjunction with the instagram and it's just kind of snowballed into you know a whole lot more than just oh i'll look at this stadium this weekend if i'm in the area can you talk about how you came up with the name road to college football Oh boy. You know, if I had an interesting story, this is where I would tell it, but uh, it's just, I mulled around with a couple of different, a um, couple of different names. I think the, the road to has always been an aspect of it uh, because I don't fly to the games. I drive all of it. Cause I want to see, you know, the entire country on the way. And I think that it's the best way to see the country. Um, and so it actually started off as a uh, road to 128. Um, and then they added a couple more teams and I'm like, wow, I can't keep changing this number every year. So I just, uh, cut it down to road to CFB and I, um, and there's never really another format, I guess, of a name out there for me. It just kind of came to it and I was like, yep, we'll roll with that. What are some of the places that you visited? Oh boy. I visited a lot of them. I've been to 75 of the 130 stadiums. Um, I've seen games in 28 of them gone as far I, I live in texas i've gone as far as new york i have gone to alabama and uh florida iowa kansas ohio michigan like a whole bunch of different states um but i have man if i sat here and listed off all 75 i've been to we'd be here all day what are some of the favorite stadiums that you've visited well i was born and raised in cleveland ohio so i'm a diehard ohio state fan always have been um so ohio state gets the nod as my favorite just because you know it's really cool to see a game of you know in the stadium that you're that you've been a fan of your whole life um but other ones that just have been outstanding have been lsu texas a&m um some of the more impressive stadiums i've seen but not games clemson is a uh, pretty cool kinnick stadium up in iowa is really awesome as well um and i've was lucky enough to see Ohio State play Michigan at Michigan. Um, despite them being bitter rivals, I couldn't help but marvel the stadium and kind of, you know, appreciate what it is. Are there any stadiums that you have not been to so far this year? A lot, yeah. <laughs> I still have the other 75 to go, um, including anything in the Mountain Time Zone or Pacific Time Zone. So, Anybody out West uh, listening to this, sorry, I probably have not been to your stadium yet, but it is in the works. What are some of the stadiums you're going to go to next season? Oh, that's a little bit of a preview, but I'll go ahead and uh, give give a look into it. I'm, I am looking at the West Coast. Um, I do a summer road trip every year where I take about five or six days and just go stadium to stadium to stadium. Uh, this year, I went through the Midwest. So Kansas, Iowa, Wisconsin, all those. Um, and next year, I believe I'm going to do a West coast tour up in, uh, with Boise state, the Colorado schools, Washington, Oregon, and, uh, California. Can you talk about the process of, of course, getting into the stadium, especially like if it's not game day, <laughs> that's the million dollar question. Um, you know, I, so I don't do anything that would be considered illegal. Uh, I don't want to get arrested. I don't want to get fined or ticketed or anything like that. 
Um, so if I do enter a stadium on non-game dates because the gate was open, I don't open the gates myself. Um, I've seen uh, some other people who, you know, jump the gates or I don't think anybody's picked a lock, but, you know, kind of tried to weasel their way in ways that probably shouldn't be. You know, these schools, they probably don't want me in their stadium some of the time. I'll be honest. Um, Auburn Ole Miss, a couple of them I got into lately. I don't believe that they were like, hey, come on in, welcome in or whatever. But the gate was open. Um, other times there are stadiums that are open to the public, uh, namely Illinois uh, Air Force. Those gates are always open and, and you're welcome to walk around as long as you, you know, don't mess around. Um, I prefer not to step on the playing surfaces. I was a former player myself. Um, and I know coaches are particular about how that is players are. Um, so out of respect for the schools, I don't, I don't trounce on the, um, playing surfaces, but yeah, if I don't have a ticket, I hope for a gate, uh, that's open. And if a gate isn't open, then on to the next one. Who inspired you to start the whole college football tour? Hmm. Uh, inspir- I don't want to say nobody because that's not true. Um, but I think it really did kind of start as what I thought to be a novel idea. Um, I thought, you know, people, they all see the MLB stadiums. They all go to see the NFL stadiums, but there's only 30 to 32 of those. Um, in college football, there's 130 of those. And I'm like, there's no way that a lot of people have done this. And, you know, that turned out to be right. Um, but as I started it, uh, there's a couple of people that have been some major inspirations for me, namely um, Andrew Baus at College Football Tour. Uh, he's been doing it a whole lot longer than I have. And he's been to, I'm going to boss the number on it, so I'm not going to guess. He's been to about 80, 90 stadiums, four games. Um, uh, Mike over at a CFB Campus Tour, he's a Twitter platform only, but I'd recommend checking him out. He uh, takes the entire football season off of work. And he goes to like 40 stadiums a season. It's, I don't even know how he does it. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, and he's been a real major influence for me, um, especially when it comes to how uh, the game days are documented. So uh, college football tour is really big on documenting the fans. And um, he, he's a, uh, he gets media passes. So he, he photographs from the field and gets some cool action shots. Um, and he's big on the, uh, you know, the, the game day experience. Um, whereas Mike is also big on the game day experience, but he's really interpersonal with fans. Um, he meets fans at all, all of his games. Um, he wears a different t-shirt, you know, the, the school t-shirt, he's really big into the, the school aspect of it and the, the pride aspect of it. Um, and I think I've so far been taking more of a, uh, stadium and a, and a sport management aspect to, to the tour. So if you follow all three of us, um, there's plenty more out there I'd recommend, but if you follow the three of us, you're going to get a pretty balanced idea of what each school is like. Have you visited any school and seen the locker rooms? Locker rooms? Well, uh, I have worked at a couple of schools, uh, Bowling Green and Texas State, in which I have gotten to see the locker rooms. Uh, Clemson had the opportunity to, but again, the locker rooms are one of those things that's like the playing surfaces that like the school really doesn't want intruders in. Um, however, uh you know, media passes, especially, especially now with uh, COVID, you're, you're not going to see any of the locker rooms, but um, media doesn't really get too much access into those locker rooms, but I was uh, blessed enough to see, um, oh, we saw Notre Dame's locker room too, but that was part of a tour and Pitts. Okay. So yeah, I guess there have been a few, but um, namely Bowling Green and Texas State while I worked at them. Can you talk about your blog and like how that got started? Yeah, so that that was another inspiration um, by Andrew. Uh, that will give another another shout out to that. He uh, he documents every game he goes to, and he's been to three hundred games. So not just each stadium, but each game that he goes to, uh, he writes a little bit about. And you know, a, a picture tells a million words, but you know the those million words they might not be an exact experience that I had. Um, and so I wanted to start the blog in order to tell those stories. Um, and, you know, honestly, mostly just for it to be informational for people, because, you know, uh, a fan of Navy really wants to go see the Navy stadium. Um, there's no way to know if you can actually go see it, if you're allowed to, um, especially with those service academies that might be behind the, the, the gates and whatnot. Um, so I wanted my, my blog and my website to be kind of a informational thing where people can go look up, you know, can I go see Clemson? Can I go see Northwestern, um, and get those answers and also find out a little bit more about each place. What is some of your future plans with the college football blog? 
Uh, well, keep expanding as, as I go. Um, I haven't really had too many set plans. Uh, you know, COVID's kind of derailed the entire year for me. Um, but I, but I like it to continue to be kind of just a, a place you can find stories about game day and get a feel for which one, you know, what's like what. And I, and I remain as, as neutral as I can. I, I don't look at it from a, oh, well, I really don't like Texas A&M, so I'm not going to write any good thing about them. No, Texas A&M is great uh, game day. And I would recommend that even, you know, fans of Florida and Alabama go, go visit it someday. Can you talk about the experience going to different games and filling the game days out? Yeah, so it's really uncomfortable. I'm going to put that out there to start. It's it's a very uncomfortable thing to put yourself in a situation. Um, I usually travel solo, so I don't know anybody. Um, and if I do know somebody that's very lucky and I, and I go find them out immediately, but it is really uncomfortable to step onto these college campuses where you don't know anybody, you're, you don't know the traditions, you're not a fan of them you kind of feel like you stick out. Um, you probably don't like walking through. I, I probably don't stick out really um, besides the road to CFB shirts that I wear. Um, but it's, you know, it's just one of those things where it's kind of fun to be uncomfortable um, and you kind of feel your way through game day and you kind of amble your way through. Um, LSU is a really great place and, and Mississippi state are both really great places where uh, the, the tailgaters will actually just like straight up invite you. They'll ask you about your, shirt and be like oh you know what what's road to cfp what do you do and you tell them about it and they're like well here come come have a drink with us come you know here's a here's a brisket sandwich here's some barbecue like come sit down with us um and you'd be amazed at how hospitable uh, a lot of people are there are some you know fan bases I, I won't throw them under the bus that are not hospitable at all and that won't happen um but you know it's just it's really it's exciting to not just see it on TV, you know, to get off TV, get boots on the ground, walk through these college campuses, walk through the college towns, go see famous places like Tumor's Corner, completely different from what I expected. Um, and just be able to have, you know, it, each, each game day is giving me a new appreciation for each school. And it doesn't matter if, you know, I'm a fan of them, if I like their jerseys, if I liked them before, if I really didn't like them, like Michigan and Michigan State, they've given me a new understanding and appreciation for what those schools are like. Do you take pictures at every game, like, for example, like whenever you went to Notre Dame, did you take a picture in front of the um, touchdown Jesus? <laughs> uh, I don't have a picture uh, in front of the touchdown Jesus. I do have a picture of touchdown Jesus. Um, I try to do a little bit of balance between taking pictures of things and taking pictures with things. Um, currently, I really like taking pictures in front of statues. Uh, that's been a thing that I started this year. Uh, but yeah, I, I tried to. So it actually started back uh, in like 2016, 2017. I would take like a picture of the stadium and like, Oh, these jerseys are cool. Take a picture here. Um, and as I've gone on, I've realized like I've seen a lot of things and I go back to look for the picture and I don't have that picture. So uh, when 2018, 2019, and then this past year, 2020 rolled around, I realized just take a picture of everything. You're not, you know, you're not going to run out of film these days. You have unlimited pictures you can take. So just take a picture of everything. And if you don't use it, you can always delete it later. Um, but I found that the, the more documentation you have, the better. Are there some stadiums that you would go to twice or three times? Oh, yeah. Yeah, plenty. I would. Yeah, I, I have gone to Texas A&M a couple of times. I've gone to uh, North Texas a couple of times. I've gone to Michigan a couple of times. I would go back to LSU a hundred times over. Um, I'm sure there's <clears throat> excuse me, plenty of other stadiums that – uh, you know, given half the chance I would, I would go running back to, of course, because they've had such great game days. Um, and especially when it comes to LSU, I saw them uh, when they played an unranked Ole Miss team and it was great for the tailgating, um, but the game wasn't that great. Great game atmosphere is still really great, but I, I would love to see what LSU Tiger Stadium on a Saturday night with Alabama in town would be like, because it was already amazing as is, but take that up another two notches. What are some of your favorite stadiums here in North Carolina? North Carolina, I've been to I've been to a few of them actually. Um, NC State, I think, was the most pleasant uh, experience that I've had with no expectation. I've not been to a, I haven't been to a game there yet, but I um, yeah I didn't expect anything from NC State, and I walked up to Carter Finley Stadium and looked around. And I was like. Oh, this kind of looks like a pro stadium. It's great. Um, I don't know what it was about. I just, I really liked that one. Um, Wake Forest was another cool one. Uh, my dad and I went there, uh, got on, got to go on the field and all that stuff, which is kind of cool. I saw a game uh, at UNC. It wasn't a great game. They played Western Carolina. Um, then it was back when they were winning like two games a year. 
Um, but it was just an interesting, it, it was an interesting stadium because everything's really sleek. There's no corners in the stadium. It's all rounded. Um, and the press boxes are, they kind of look like bunkers a little bit. Um, and, and the concourse is really interesting with the ramps being spirally and, and way out from the way out from the seats. Um, then I also saw Duke um, and I, <laughs> I'll reserve any harsh words for Duke itself, but um, I, I, the gate was open and, and there's a person sitting there. I'm like, Hey, do you mind if I just step in really quick and take a picture? And they looked me in the eye and said, absolutely not. And I was like, Oh, come on. So uh, I, I ended up getting a photo from a vantage point over by, uh, by the basketball arena. But um, yeah, I've, I've been to a few of the North Carolina stadiums. What I like about them is they're all right by each other. So you can see all of them almost at once, uh, you know, with the exception of app state and um, East Carolina. Have you went to East Carolina and app state whenever you were here in North Carolina? No, I, I have not gotten a chance to go to uh, Dowdy Ficken uh, in East Carolina. I have not gotten that chance yet. Really want to. Um, it's a massive group five venue, uh, probably belongs up in the power five. Uh, and then Appalachian State, I I wanted to make an exception to go to it on my uh, summer road trip this past year, but I had to make Virginia Tech by dark. I didn't make Virginia Tech by dark. So if I were to go back and redo it, I would have uh, I would have swung through uh, App State for sure. What advice would you give upcoming future people that are looking to do the same thing as you, like I have done? Just do it. I mean, I know that's a really, you know, kind of a vague and, and simple statement, but just get out there and do it. Um, if you have a car or a means of getting somewhere, uh, and if you're fortunate enough to live in the North Carolina or anywhere in the Northeastern United States, just get out and do it. There's so many stadiums that are close, um, you know, and if you live in Texas, like I do it. it Things are a hike, but you can still do it. Uh, It's not an expensive thing to do, but I'm also not going to sit here and say it's free. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it's, you know, pocket change. It costs money, um, but it doesn't cost a lot of money and it doesn't have to. And actually, um, one of the aspects that I take on Road to CFB and something I write about often on my website is how you can do it on a budget. Uh, Because when I started this, I was a college student with like no income uh, and I had to find corners to cut. Uh, in order to do it. And so I do have a blog post about that. That's pinned to the top of my website that you can check out. Um, but I just recommend people do, just do it bit by bit, get the first three out of the way, then get five more. And you know, you're on, you're on vacation. Just ask your family, Hey, can we pull off to the road here? I want to take 10 minutes at this statement. You'd be surprised at how many of your friends and family would be like, sure, that's fine. That's cool. Um, you, you know, just be diligent about it and take your time. Where can my listeners find the road to college football at on social media? Oh, that's an excellent question. It's uh, at road to CFB on Instagram. That's where I do most, uh, most of my documenting about it. Um, and where we have the biggest, biggest follower base. We're uh, up near 4,000 followers over there. Um, I do have a Twitter at road to CFB. Uh, that's more, I'll, I'll, tweet off you know a whole bunch of tweets on sunday night football about the game so if you're not interested in that uh, that's probably not a place for you but uh, also road to cfb.com uh, is where i compile everything and hopefully is the best resource for everybody is some of your future plans having a youtube channel to to document other ways you video wise know, <laughs> you know what it was and i started it uh, and I just did not have the time to to cut the videos, uh, especially not the way that I want. It's very time consuming. I would love to make a YouTube series about it. I would love to have a documentary series about it on YouTube or whatever. Uh, so boy, if anybody's listening and, and you would like to uh, help me out with that, please you send me a message, send me an email. Um, but it, it is in, I'm not gonna say it's in the works, but it is on the table for things that I really would like to do. Thank you again, Brett, for your interview and best of luck with college football the road to college football. No, thank you for having me, Brandon. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Brett, for your interview and best of luck. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.